is up. Um, so you know, standard uh, cluster list tells me the, the name of the, uh, the cluster, Stella. Um, we can uh, use the status command and we can see the two VIO servers uh, are running here. If we list then we find all the uh, logical units are here and ready to go. Nothing is mapped in in this case because we hit uh, no option to not do the mapping for the virtual machines. But it's all up and running and uh, off you go. Which is a sigh of relief at this point that we've actually done the recovery and it all works fine. Now let's uh, rewind. If we took the Y option to do the mapping, you can get a list for, um, do you want to map all of them, a selected number of logical units, or no thanks. And if, if you go for the one or two, then you'll need to supply a mapping file. And the file uh, looks like this. So you have a host name uh, title in here. And then we have the VO server that was on the source, and the VO server that you now want to use on the uh, target machine. Then we have these codes for the source location code and the you now target location code. Um, this is sort of format diagram. The next the screen has got uh, a more worked example that hopefully you can understand what's going on. But you have uh, one of these for each of the VO servers that you used to have, mapping it to the VO server that you want now, and then uh, the mapping of the location code. So here's my little worked example. Now VO server one is the what it was called. It's now called DR VO server one, and this uh, location code in here is the vhost adapter location code or virtual SCSI location code that is connected to the virtual machine. So knowing which vhost uh, you had in your source site and now your target site, it will connect all the logical units that were connected to this vhost to the new vhost and so the new virtual machine that you created at your disaster recovery site. Sounds very complicated, actually fairly simple as long as you have the information. Um, this is the output, if you like, from the LS map minus all command. So worth saving that as well as the uh, backup. So we lost our primary site and we recovered it, everything onto our disaster recovery site. Um, it's all working nicely fixed repository disk, uh, all the virtual machines we connected and started up and we're working fine. Excellent, well done. Now, however, um, you recover your source or primary site and what happens when you do that? Well, not much because you actually have different disks in this situation so they're not going to corrupt each other's file systems and, and that sort of thing. Um, if you haven't changed the IP addresses then you'll actually have two machines with the same IP address if you bring up your original virtual machines and that could cause uh, a lot of problems so be aware of that. But we now have, if you like, the good disks down here on the DR site. Maybe you want to move these back to our original site. Which you could uh, operate at your DR site until you have another disaster and uh, treat your original as a new DR site. But if you want to go back, uh, what are the options? Well, uh, I can think of two ways of doing that. One is that you remove your shared storage pool, the data up in here. Uh, maybe there's uh, right zero for those LUNs, for example. We can keep, keep the LUNs, but uh, we want to overwrite them. Then we stop all our virtual machines down in here, stop all the services that we're supplying. Um, so that's going to cave a complete outage of everything used in the pool. And then we do a reverse DR recovery. So we'll actually uh, do a DR recovery back to our original site, do the recovery again, and then bring up everything on our new site, making sure that we never start the DR site um, with those disks. The second option, if we only restarted a few virtual machines on our disaster recovery site in here, maybe the blue one isn't a tech dev type system, so we need to recover that. Um, and we use the green one in here, perhaps it's the prime application or database or website or something. And so we were running this in disaster recovery mode. What we need to do then is only copy the logical unit that this virtual machine was using, logical units. So if we stop this virtual machine, then we use DD to copy these out, um, FTP these over to our original site, and then we can DD these back into the original logical unit. Then we've um, freshened up the data in our original shared storage pool, and we can start the green service back up in here. I want to make sure we'd never restart this guy here, of course, because that would uh, cause confusion. If our logical units were thin provisioned, of course, this would have made them thick provision by the time we copied them back over here because 
the the DD will copy out all of the unused logical unit uh, blocks uh, as a pages full of zeros. And that's it. Disaster recovery. Um, in my small case in here, it took a few minutes, so a larger one may take a bit longer to do all those uh, connections. But uh, pretty simple to do once you've got yourself prepared. It's at your own risk, but at least we do have uh, real disaster recovery, and we can practice it in advance. You need to uh, test it to make sure that uh, you are ready on your particular equipment and it works for you. Um, decide whether you do the manual or the scripted uh, mappings and uh, prepare for that. And uh, but make a note that it's not like uh, full power HA. We don't have uh, failover and fail back capability. The uh, fail back is a bit more complicated, and you have to have a plan to do that. Um, then we're going to show you some uh, graphs that I generated. Um, 
tendencies um, and unfortunately we can this time uh, return the, the Y here is the capital so that's the default so let's just install it. Check it. 